Because I know not the Savior, I will not release anyone. Because I'm not free. Because I'm not liberated. Because I do not know the Lord, the Lord who saves. The Lord who sanctifies and the Lord who immerses us in the power of the Holy Ghost. Because I know not the Lord, I will not let them go. The people who were their tongue keep others in captivity. You know why? They know not the Lord. The people who speak outrageous words blasphemous words unbelieving words against the god of heaven you know why they know not the lord and because they know not the lord their hearts have not been transformed and your speech will betray you your tongue will give you out your tongue will tell who you are and what you are look at the result in exodus chapter 15 we're reading there from verse 9. This man that, you know, spoke against the Lord. I know not the Lord. Look at the result. Because the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity is set us on fire. The curse of nature and the man himself with that unruly tongue. The man himself with that blasphemous tongue is set on the fire of hell. It says in Exodus chapter 15, reading from verse 9, it says, The enemy said, Pharaoh, the enemy said, The emperor, the enemy said, I will, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, and my lust shall be satisfied upon them i will draw my sword my hand shall destroy them uh, that's what he said with the tongue and you can see the tongue his tongue is for destruction his tongue is for scattering his tongue is for kind of eliminating the people that god himself has established and he boasted with the tongue. The tongue boasted great things. Look at the next verse there in verse 10. In verse 10, thou didst blow with thy wind. The sea covered them. They sank as ledge in the mighty waters. That's what's happened to Pharaoh. That's what happened to all his uh, army and all the chariots and the riders on the chariots. In verse 11, it says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness and fearful in praises, doing wonders the man perished because of his little tongue what he had said against god look at daniel chapter 3 verse 15 in daniel chapter 3 verse 15 it says now if you be ready at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet flute harp Sabot, Sabtri, and Dosima, and all kinds of music, and ye fall down and worship it, the image which I have set up made, and uh, well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast into the, the same hour in the midst of a burning furry furnace and who is that god that the little tongue active again that the carnal tongue speaking again that the unbelieving tongue speaking again that the boasting tongue speaking again and it says who is that god that shall deliver you out of my Hands. The Lord proved to him that the mighty God of heaven that makes the fire of the kingdom 
of Babylon nothing. He threw them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He threw them into the very fiery furnace, and the Son of God came. They were walking freely in the midst of the fire, and he called them out. You would have thought that would have been enough to break the man. No. Once the heart is not converted, whatever miracle you see, whatever wonders you observe, once the heart is unconverted, untouched, untransformed, the mouth, the leaves, the tongues will still continue in the old, old way of talking. Look at chapter 4. In chapter 4, Daniel chapter 4, we're reading from verse 30. In Daniel chapter 4, verse 30, and the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my might, by the might of my power, and for the honor of my majesty. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, it says, While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, a king, but his tongue was not a, a kindly, kingly, royal tongue. Pos whatever position anybody has, whatever education anybody has, whatever authority anybody has, if the heart is not converted, the tongue was still the canal. Whatever upliftment, whatever opportunities anyone has in life if the heart has not been touched transformed tamed the tongue also will not be tamed and because of what comes out of the mouth the tongue then judgment comes it says to thee it is spoken like the, 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 the kingdom is departed from thee. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the bees of the field. They shall make thee eat to eat grass as oxen and seven times seven seasons seven years shall pass over thee until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth ye to whomsoever he will look at verse 33 in verse 33 the same hour was the scene fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar and he was driven from men and did each grass as oxen and his body was wet with dew, the dew of heaven. And it says, till his ears were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. You see, that was the problem. It was the problem of the tongue. As that touch was the Old Testament, no. As long as man has a heart and he has a tongue and the tongue is connected with the heart and the heart is not cleansed, the heart is not circumcised, the heart is not transformed, what will still come out of the tongue will bring fire, devastation, judgment upon the man. We're looking at Jude, Jude has only one chapter. 
Jude chapter 1 verse 14 and Enoch also the servant from Adam prophesied of thee saying behold the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints and then it says in verse 15 in verse 15 to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly ungodly that's the heart then the tongue unruly that the heart then the tongue unrighteous that the heart that the tongue to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly unrighteous deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches hard speeches like the speech of peril like the speech of Nebuchadnezzar like the speech of Herod like the speech of the people whose hearts and lives have not been turned around by the Lord the hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him look at verse 16 in verse 16 these are murmurers tongue complainers that the tongue walking after their own evil laws and it says and their mouth and their tongue speaketh great swelling words having men's presence in admiration because of advantage is the problem of the tongue and eventually if somebody will come to this world they will have the big mouth and the big mouth will be speaking against the god of heaven is called the antichrist look at revelation chapter 13 and reading from verse 4 revelation chapter 13 reading from verse 4 and they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshiped the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him why because of what he says with the mouth because his heart was contrary to god his heart was purposefully against the authority of the almighty and so he speaks from the condition of the heart it tells us in verse 5 in verse 5 it says and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blaspheme and blasphemes and, and, and blasphemies and then it says and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months then in verse 6 in verse 6 it tells us and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and it and his uh, and his uh, tabernacle and uh, in the and it says and them that dwell in heaven that the antichrist and a big thing you know about the antichrist is the tongue in the mouth is the blasphemy because of his devilish heart like that of a dragon what happens to him look at chapter 19 in uh, chapter 19 verse 20 um, revelation chapter 19 chapter 19 reading from verse 20 19 please in revelation chapter 19 reading from verse 20 it says and the beast was taken and with the false prophet 
that wrought miracles uh, from uh, from uh, before him uh, and it says with which he deceived them uh, that dwelt that had received the mark of the beast and them uh, that worshipped the image and these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning uh, with brimstone you see the tongue will set the course of nature on fire and him that shall be sure be set on the fire of hell look at chapter 20 verse 10 in chapter 20 verse 10 it says and the devil that deceived them how did he deceive them by the tongue by the words of the mouth that, that's how people usually deceive that's how followers of satan that's how they deceive that's how they unconverted who are not born again and the carnal and the evil people full of iniquity in the heart the mouth deceives the people that they are relating with and it says and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever that's how serious it is to have a tongue that is misused a tongue that is not under control that little member that is not under control but understand you cannot control the tongue in isolation you have to have conversion in the heart you have to have cleansing in the heart you have to have the circumcision of heart and then the tongue will be under control if not the little fire will devour men great men small men common men even church going men if their hearts are not converted and their tongues are not converted we're coming to number two number two here we're looking at the little foxes that destroy great ministries the little foxes we're still talking about the tongue but now we're using the picture of the foxes we're looking at um chapter 3 of James reading from verse 6 James chapter 3 reading from verse 6 and the tongue as a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members and then it says it that it defileth the whole body and is and set it on fire the cause of nature and it is set on the fire of hell. And you remember the story that Jesus told of that rich man who lived sumptuously here on earth. And he didn't know God as redeemer. He didn't even acknowledge God as his maker. Eventually he died. And he went to hell fire. And his whole body was in hell fire. The fingers, the hands, the feet, the body, but the one thing he singled out when he said, Father Abraham sent Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for i am tormented in this flame the tongue the tongue yes the whole body will go the whole personality will go to hell but the tongue in particular to cool my tongue because i'm tormented in this flame the tongue is a fire 
a world of iniquity, it is set on the fire of hell. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it says, But the tongue can no man tame. The tongue can no man tame. Friends who are here tonight, brothers, sisters who are here tonight, the study does not lead us to just, okay, I'll be quiet. I won't say anything. You will say something. You know, it's the heart. If your heart is provoked, your heart cannot jump out and say anything and point to the people provoking the heart. The heart will send message to the tongue. And the tongue will show that you are under provocation. When somebody pushes you and tips you to be angry, the heart cannot jump out and show anger. No. The facial expression might show the anger, but eventually it is the tongue that will lash out on the people that you are thinking and making you angry. When the heart is frustrated and emotionally you are frustrated, you know, the mind will not jump out, the soul will not jump out. The soul, the mind, the heart will give the assignment to the tongue and say, now, emotionally, all the members within the body, they are disturbed. And so tongue, show them, tell them, it is the tongue. And so, if the heart has not been dealt with, the tongue can no man tame. It says, it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison full of deadly poison uh, you know how when people are sad it's okay i'm sad why should anybody around me be happy and so they send forth poisonous words to their neighbors so that as i am sad they too will be sad in the tongue a deadly poison when somebody is uh, you know it's like inside there is an acid that is burning on the inside. Uh -uh. If I'm burning with acid on the inside, why are the people around me so calm and so nice and so peaceful? They want the other people to be as sorrowful, as corroded, as, uh, as feeling pain, like they are feeling pain. That's why the tongue will lash out so that if I'm not happy, you don't have a right to be happy. If I'm sorrowful, you have to be sorrowful. If I am not, uh, you know, uh, content with where I am, then there should be no contentment in your life. The tongue is full of deadly poison. And it doesn't matter. A little poison will make the water undrinkable. A little poison will make your environment inhabitable because of that little thing. The tongue, that's the reason why we need to get that tongue back to Calvary and get that tongue crucified and the heart cleansed. A cleansed heart, a crucified tongue, combining together will help us to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The tongue is very important. Look at Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Take us, the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. The little foxes that spoil the vines. Think about it, a relationship. It's the little, little things that happen. The little words we throw at each other that spoils a relation. Think about the family. In the family, the little, little words, not thoughtful, not careful, just throwing out the word like an arrow, like a dagger. It's those little, little words that scatter 
the family and think about the ministry the works the lord has given us and you have a lot of people around you and you're working together and you're moving together in unison in cooperation and in coordination well coordinated but it's the little world you know somebody there something is rising from their heart and whatever is rising from their heart gets to the tongue and as soon as he gets to the tongue and the fellow is not remembering that in unity there is strength when you scatter us there is no strength anymore and the word comes to the mouth and then he spews that out that is the little poison that destroys a fellowship a usefulness a profitability and so it's telling us that the little foxes they spoil our vine because our vines have tender graves it tells us in ezekiel ezekiel chapter 13 we're looking at verse 4 oh israel thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert that thy prophets are like the foxes what do the prophets use the tongue well, how do they profess, or prophesy the tongue? How do they pray the tongue? How do they counsel the tongue? How do they encourage the tongue? How do they speak false doctrine? The tongue. And because of the positioning and because of the wrong use of the tongue of those prophets, they became foxes that scattered them uh, look at second peter chapter 2 reading from verse 1 in second peter chapter 2 reading from verse 1 it says but there were false prophets also among the people remember it's referring to the old testament there were false prophets also among the people how do we know there were false prophets their tongue, what they said, what they spoke. When they confronted those prophets, confronted Jeremiah, and Jeremiah prophesied the word of the Lord. How did Jeremiah prophesy the word of the Lord? The tongue. That's why God said, I have touched your tongue. I put my word in your mouth. All the good prophets have is the tongue. The false prophets. When the false prophet came and said, No, Jeremiah, the captivity is going to last for only two years. And he deceived the people. How did he deceive the people? The tongue, the tongue. And so it's the tongue that makes a prophet a uh, fox or makes the prophets foxes. And these little foxes, what they say with their mouth, it's what makes people to believe lies it must make people to get this courage it's what makes people to say okay if that is so we're going back to egypt it takes the tongue that acts like that little fox that will spoil and scatter and destroy the ministry there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers false teachers among you how do we do a false teacher by the tongue how do we teach whether you are teaching in the school or you're teaching in the church is the tongue whether you're teaching the home or you're teaching in um, you know the social circle it's the tongue and it's the tongue that betrays somebody as either a false prophet or a false teacher and then it says who privately shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the lord that bought them and bring upon themselves bring upon themselves the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity and it defiles the whole body it is it sets the course of nature on fire and the tongue itself now when it said the tongue will be set in the fire of hell the fire of hell you understand 
It doesn't mean when you die that God will cut off the tongue and throw it in the fire because it's the tongue that sets the course of nature on fire and it is set on the fire of hell. The tongue still remains in the body and the whole body of the tongue because of the evil, the unrighteousness in the tongue. The whole body now with the tongue is set on fire. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it tells us, And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And in verse 3, it says in verse 3, And through covetousness shall they with faint hypocritical pretending words make merchandise of you. And it says, Whose judgment now of a long time so lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. It's talking about the judgment that comes because of the unrighteousness and evil in the tongue. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, it says, When you speak, that's the tongue again, in action. The tongue in action. They speak great swelling words of vanity, swelling words of emptiness, swelling words of shallowness. You know, the, the people who talk to their neighbors, I disagree. I disagree with that teaching. What do you disagree with? Okay, say what you, say what you want to say. What comes out is vanity, emptiness, shallowness. It does not have any root. And they deceive their neighbors with their tongue. And it said they're speaking great swelling words of vanity. They, it says, allure their entice through the lusts of the flesh. And it says through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. I've discovered all these many years, the false teachers don't generally go out to find people they're going to deceive. They normally go to the people who had escaped from error who had escaped from sin. The people who had given their lives to the Lord and they are saved and they are praying to be sanctified and they are praying to be steadfast in the teaching of the word of God. That's where those false teachers and those false prophets, that's where they go. They don't go to the people that do not know their right from their left. They don't go to the terrible abject, original, depraved sinners. They go to the people who had been, that others have labored on, that others have brought into the kingdom. And then they speak their own great swelling words of vanity, emptiness, shallowness, so that they can turn them back to their vomit. And it says in verse 19, look at verse 19, while they promise them liberty. How do they promise them liberty? With their tongue. They make the promises with their tongue. And they say, you'll be free. If you'll be free, that's a good word. But what it means is, you'll be free from the control of God. You'll be free from the law of God. You'll be free from all the control and all the directives of the Lord. And you will be on your own like Lucifer. And you'll not be under the control of God. That's bad liberty. But when you're free from sin, that's what Christ came to give. When you're free from carnality, when you're free from worldliness, that's the freedom, the liberty Christ came to give. But he said, no, no, no. They, they want
want you to be free from the control of the word of God so that you can live as you please. And they're very serious about that. And they talk like false teachers, false prophets, and they want to assure the young people, free, you are going to be free. Young people, God sets us free from sin. It sets us free from self-will. It sets us free from satanic control or any other kind of freedom that's false doctrine. And then it says, it says that the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage. Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, But if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. I pray the Lord will not leave us in the hands of false prophets and false teachers in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the little faith that doubts our great maker. The little faith that doubts our great maker. And we're looking at, um, we're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 30. Matthew chapter 6. We're reading from verse 30. It says, Wherefore, if God so close the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more close you, O ye of little faith? O ye of little faith, what has that got to do with the little tongue? Well, because we manifest little faith by the little tongue, by the little member. You remember the story of um, Rebecca, the wife of uh, Isaac, the mother of Esau and Jacob. Well, the mother was pregnant of the twins. God had told her that the younger will rule over the elder. And that the blessing, the way she understood it, and the way it is said, the blessing of Abraham and Isaac will fall on the younger, on Jacob now. The mother heard that I see called Esau and said, Go make me the kind of food venison that I love, that I like, and bring it, and I will bless you before I die. Well, there are people that think of death much, much longer before death comes because. Or if you read the Genesis properly, Isaac did not die until 40 years after. And yet his thought was going to die now uh, because he was having some old age symptoms. His eyes were getting dim. And he thought it's a sign, old age sign. So God make me the venison before I Die. And the mother had that. And the mother remembered that God said he will give that blessing to the younger, to Jacob. But now, little faith. She didn't think that God 
can overrule that God can do what he needed to do O ye of little faith called Jacob go take something from your flock and bring and will prepare and will take it to your father very quickly before he circles back so that you will have the blessing Jacob said mommy what if my father discovers and see that I am a deceiver and puts a curse on me. He said, don't worry about that. Let the curse come on me, O ye of little faith. You know the story? That's how they played the game, the game of little faith. And Esau came back. Esau was angry. He said, I'm going to kill that man. If the little tongue of the mother that planted that hatred in Esau, and the deception in Jacob, and they deceived the husband. When we take out of the hand of God what he should do and what he will do, and then we manipulate so that we will be clever, more clever than God. That is little faith. And it's a little tongue that plays the game, and eventually, we get into trouble. Uh, we're looking at Matthew chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 26. Matthew chapter, chapter 8, verse 26, and he says unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Now, the tongue does not have Fear. It's just, you know, kind of tissue and blood in the heart that has fear. And when we see this situ that situation, then the fear comes to the heart and the heart spills out what it has to the tongue. Master, Master, cares not that we perish. That's what the tongue is saying. It came from the heart and when the heart is fearful that's the way the tongue will speak and the tongue will waver and the tongue will tremble and the tongue will not be sure of itself because of the fear in the heart look at Isaiah chapter 51 we're reading from verse 13 Isaiah Chapter 51, verse 13. And forgettest the Lord, thy maker, that has stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth, and has feared, has feared, has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were ready to destroy and wear the fury of the oppressor when we talk words that show there is fear there is trembling and we're not sure of ourselves we lose confidence we have unbelief, and the little faith we have, we forget what God had done in the past, in the past in the Bible, in the past in our lives. Look at us. We've been in the Christian faith from that time, how many years now, until this time. And look at what he delivered you from, and look at what he protected you from. But we have forgotten that. The same kind of trouble coming today came already about 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And the Lord delivered us and we're still alive. After 20 years of that kind of trouble that men and women in the world that they, that they stir up. But the same kind of trouble comes today and we forget our God. And then we fear the fury of men. We fear the storm. 
that men and women are raising up today. And it says, because of that now, we're shivering, we're trembling, we're afraid because of the fury of men. And the tongue will either say, I cannot, I cannot go out. Why? He's afraid. I cannot do that. The tongue will be the culprit, the offender, that will say what it says because of the fear in the heart. Because the tongue cannot be disengaged from the heart. You are fearful in the heart, your tongue will tell. And your tongue will betray you. But then he tells us in Isaiah chapter 57, we're looking at verse 11. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 11, and of whom hast thou been afraid? Or feared that thou hast lied? That thou hast lied? The fear is not on the tongue, the fear is in the heart. The fear is in the mind. The fear is in the brain. But uh, the tongue that will tell the lie. When something has happened to the heart, and the heart is not stable, and the heart is not steadfast, and the hand does not remember. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. As the fear is brewing in the heart, in the mouth that will lie. And has not remembered, that, and has not remembered me, nor laid to thine heart. Then it says, have not I held my peace even of old, and thou fearest me not when we fear man, we cannot fear God. When God has said, Go, do this, if we fear God, if we honor God, if we know that the sender will protect the one that is sent. We go, but when we see men, the frowns of Pharaoh, the fury of Pharaoh, and we become afraid of men, then we don't fear God anymore because we're thoughtless, and our thoughtlessness makes our tongue to now say, I cannot, I will not. The lions are outside there, they'll eat me up. That the tongue expressing the fear in the heart. And we have not compared the Almighty God, contrasted the Almighty God with puny men, poor men who can do nothing. That's why Jesus said, Fear them not that have the power to kill, and after that, they have nothing else they can do. I will forewarn you, my friends, who you will fear. Fear him, the almighty God, who has power to kill and to cast into hell forever and ever. I say unto you, fear him. But our little faith will evaporate Whenever we see the fury of men and we see what they are saying, what they are bragging about, it tells us in Luke chapter 12, we're reading from verse 28. Luke chapter 12, we're reading from verse 8. In verse uh, 28, rather, in verse 28, if then God so close the grass which today is, and then it says, and tomorrow is cast into the into the fire, into the oven. How much more will he close you, O ye of little faith? That's a problem. O ye of little faith. I pray 
our faith will grow in the Lord in Jesus name and then it says in verse 29 in verse 29 and seek ye not what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink neither be of a doubtful mind little faith makes us to be of doubtful mind but why should we doubt he is our maker why should we doubt he sent us to this world why should we doubt he has promised and, and he has also pronounced what we will do here on earth why should we doubt we're running the errands for the lord why should we doubt we're doing his will we're doing his work and he will give appropriate security and protection and provision to us as we're doing his will he will not fail you and you will not fail him he says and seek ye and seek not ye what what he shall eat or what he shall drink neither ye be neither be ye of a doubtful mind look at verse 30 in verse 30 it says for all these things do the nations of the world seek at the sea cutter and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things look at verse 31 in verse 31 it says but rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you amen, amen. all these things shall be added unto you when the heart forgets that the mouth will be talking of inflation when the heart forgets that the tongue will be talking of recession when the heart forgets the words of christ and he said heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away when we have that little faith and when we have that dying faith when we have that faith that is slipping away from us it will appear the words of christ will not be fulfilled but the words of christ will be fulfilled be not of doubtful mind because if you seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 32. In verse 32, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, the riches of the kingdom, the righteousness of the kingdom the provision of the kingdom and everything christ died for and provided on the cross of calvary it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom don't allow your tongue to run away don't allow your tongue to be you know so influenced by the doubt by the carnality by the world by everything around us let's make let's get this tongue back to Calvary and you say cleanse my heart my tongue will be clean sanctify my spirit my tongue will be sanctified sincere upright and circumcise my heart and my tongue will be circumcised Lord do something in my heart and fill me with faith in your word so that I'm not carrying about the little doubting of faith but I'm having the faith of Jesus Christ in my heart and your mouth your tongue your lips will speak good words and your family husband and wife parents and children we need this faith faith in the Lord so that and the love of God in our heart and the love and the affection in our heart will affect what we we'll say with the mouth and the little member the little tongue the little fire the little foxes the little faith 
will not ruin any of our lives in Jesus' name. You say good finally. Amen. God bless you. God has blessed you. God will continue to bless you. Let's, let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer that the Lord himself will work on our heart so that it will work on our tongue. Work on our heart. Purify our heart to purge our tongue. Sanctify the heart to sanctify the tongue. Make us have clean faith, clear faith, complete faith in the Lord so that our tongue will be in the right position to express the right things to our neighbors tongue the little tongue will express the right thing in our families express the right things in our neighborhood express the right thing in the assembly, in the fellowship, in the church of the living God. Don't allow little fire to come out of your mouth. Don't allow a little slander, little insult, Little deception Little fear Fear of man Little iniquity Don't allow Your tongue To express Negative Issues Negative things of life Bring that heart, that mind, that soul, and the tongue back to the altar. Lay down before the Lord. Cleanse this heart. Your emotion, don't allow your emotion to run off from you. When the emotions run off from you, your tongue will run after the emotion. It's what you feel, the emotion on the inside, that eventually affects your tongue and you regret what you say. Calm down that emotion fretfulness, worry, and anxiety in the heart. So it brings out that fretfulness on the tongue. Let God work on the inside. And then the tongue will speak right. Temptations come. No problem. They came many years ago too, and they've been coming ever since. Whoever came at that time, don't allow your tongue to run loose. What will I do? What shall I do? They've come again. They're doing that again. Calm down. Calm down. When you are distrust, in your heart, disturbed in your heart, bothered in your heart, wavering in your heart, that will set your tongue on fire. And then you'll begin to say things 
The children have said, Come down. There's no temptation that has taken you more than is common to man. But God is faithful. Also will make a way of escape that she may be able to bear it. Come down. Think before you speak. Look. Before you leap, be thoughtful, be sober, be steady. Look at the word of God. Faith comes by the word of God. And faith grows by the word of God. Don't allow anything to jolt you. Because once your soul, your spirit, your heart is jolted, taken by surprise, it will affect your tongue. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Defileth the cause of nature, setteth on fire the cause of nature, and it is set on the fire of hell. Don't allow your spirit to be disturbed, jolted, surprised, emotionally devastated, because that will affect your tongue. Follow peace with all men. And in the heart, when your heart is peaceful, your tongue will be peaceful. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. When your mind, your heart concentrates on the desire to see the Lord, holiness then your tongue will not go astray. Have you been saved since you started hearing the word of God? Check up. Have you been truly sanctified since you started hearing about sanctification? Check up. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Check up. If you have, your tongue will be under the control of the Spirit. But if you still talk like the common man, the common woman, if your tongue lacks control, Untamed, like the carnal man, the carnal woman, if your tongue is spewing out angry words, terrible, terrifying words. Christ is not in control of your tongue. Evidence is not in control of your heart. Why don't you surrender to the Lord? Your heart 
your will, your mind, and let him be Savior and Lord. Total control of your heart. Christ, supreme, the director, the Lord, the controller of your heart, your spirit, your emotion, and so in total control of your tongue. Don't allow that little member to set the course of the nature of your life on fire and then eventually it is set on the fire of hell. Or shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world by the use of a lousy, lying, deceptive tongue and he loses his soul. Or what shall a man, what shall a woman give in exchange for his soul? If he is not in control of your heart, and he is not in control of your tongue. Your destiny will be on the other side, where the untamed, unconverted, the uncontrollable, where they live for all eternity. Come to Christ. My son, my daughter, give me thine heart. Give him the heart. Let him take total, absolute control of your heart, of your mind, of your soul, of your emotion, of your decisions then there will be no problem with your tongue. Your tongue will be under his control. Let your salvation be meaningful. Let that sanctification be scriptural. Let the control of the Spirit of God upon your heart and your life, let it be evident. Don't allow your tongue to serve the devil. Don't allow your tongue to destroy you. Don't allow your tongue to scatter your family. Take it. the little fire. Take it of the little foxes. Take it of the little face. 
that tries to maneuver out clever God for the sake of heaven get into heaven come back to Calvary to seriously, steadfastly possess holiness come back where you began to Christ the Savior the Sanctifier the Baptizer and the Holy Ghost come back come back to sobriety come back to sincerity come back to following the Lord with all your heart all your soul all your mind come back don't remain in the wilderness with the backsliders and at the tongue that sells you into the hand of Satan the tyrant and he uses your tongue that little member against your spiritual progress and against your desired destiny come back in Jesus name we pray father we thank you for your word the word we receive will change our lives lord tonight we receive your word we believe your word and we're going to act on that word in jesus name we pray lord as we surrender our heart our soul our spirit our mind our emotion our decisions and the directions of our life we totally surrender unto you we pray lord you're coming total absolute spiritual control of our hearts in jesus name and as to control the heart control our tongue control our speech we pray you take away the nature of Pharaoh, the nature of Nebuchadnezzar, the nature of Herod, away from our hearts in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, our tongue will not scatter our families. Our tongue will not destroy our progress in our places of work our tongues will not destroy our children destroy our wives destroy our husbands and destroy take away happiness from our families in jesus name we we'll pray lord as we go we'll remember what we've heard and when the temptation comes to act like we used to act talk like we used to talk when the temptation comes to allow our tongue to run loose remind us and bring us under the profitable pleasant control of the lord jesus christ as savior and lord in jesus name lord bless your people bless them more 
bless them more and let our tongues be a source of blessing to everyone around us we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray let your tongue let your tongue let your tongue pronounce a great heavenly amen yeah.